Okay, we're going to talk about quadratics today. So, there are three main forms you want to be able to work with and identify when it comes to quadratics. Um, standard form, factor form, and graphing, otherwise known as vertex form. So, we're going to talk about each of them individually. So, standard form. So, standard form function looks like this. So, since we're talking about functions, we're going to use f of x. So standard form looks like this, ax squared plus bx plus c. And so in this form, every form gives you a piece of the picture. So in this form, you get the y-intercept for free. So the y-intercept is the value of the output when x is 0. So you can see when you plug 0 in for x squared and 0 for b, in for b, they go away and you'll have to c. So the y-intercept is always going to be the point 0, comma, c. Okay? Now, for equations, right, this has an equivalent form as an equation. So when I'm solving equations, okay, the form looks like this. I have it equal to 0. So you'll see that in the other forms that are similar to their function, um, you know, equals, they will always equal zero, okay? So the important thing is to know is that it's x squared, x, and then a term, okay? The second form is factored form. So factored form is easy to note because this has parentheses. So factored form is like this. A times x plus b times x plus c. Notice there's an a in this equation. This form is an A in another form, so we'll talk about that later. So in this form, factored form, you get the x-intercepts. And so in this case, the x-intercepts are the values of x that will make each parenthesis zero, because that will make the entire equation zero. So, one, so in this parenthesis, in this factor, the value of x that makes it equal zero is negative b. So 1 is the opposite of b. Then in this factor, what makes x, what makes that equal zero is when x is negative c. Okay, so we like factor form lux to gives us intercepts. Okay, in fact, when we factor an equation, right, we can find and solve equations really quickly. So the factor form again, in the, as an equation, looks like this. Right, it's that form equal to zero. And so when we factored so far in this course, we have done this and set them equal to zero, right, and use the zero product property. Okay, the third last form is vertex form. So vertex form is the most useful form for graphing. That's what we call a graphing form. So it looks like this. And it's called, alternatively, vertex form because this form gives me the vertex. The vertex is going to be the value of h, comma, k. And so this form is interesting because it's minus h. So we want to think about the opposite. So it's minus h. So you put a plus in front of there, you get the x-coordinate to the vertex. So as an equation... It actually has a different name. We call it perfect square form as an equation. And so what that looks like is this. is when I have the entire left-hand side, and sometimes it looks like this, and that equals something squared. So when we will learn how to complete the square, usually we get to a point where we can square both sides of a quadratic equation. Equation? Well, that's what this form is for. Okay. So there's three forms. And then the last thing I want to talk about is answers. So this is talking about this last slide is how do we depict answers? Okay. So try this again. So this are solutions. So there's two ways to depict solutions: exact or radical form or approximate or decimal form. So exact form with quadratics is what I use. Radical. So sometimes 
you know, for example, in our textbook, it does this, right? So sometimes when I use like the quadratic formula, I can't reduce this because five is not a perfect square. So the most exact answer I can write is it in radical form. So it'll usually be fractions, okay? So this happens a lot when the the uh, the equation cannot be factored. So when I can't factor an equation to solve it, these are types of solutions I more than likely will get. Approximate is where I use my calculator to compute a decimal value for these answers. So usually approximate because I'm rounding, right? And so in this class, as you go forward, three to four decimal places are good. So the book writes for these answers, if I were to do this answer, I get negative 0 0.38. And then the decimal value for this would be negative 2.62, approximate. Now you can go further than that. The book usually goes out to two places. And so you want to make sure that this form here is the best way we can write it because it's the exact answer, okay? This form makes more sense when we're talking about values that we don't use radicals to, you know, describe like money or population, right? Decimals are more appropriate, but everything else, if I'm just flat out solving an equation, exact form is always the best, okay? So always read the, read the directions, okay? If it doesn't say, always err on the side of caution and use exact. Usually it'll tell you if it wants around it, so read the directions.